Hey all, I am here to talk about assignment two one of this week, which is where you'll be isolating an image from its background using selection tools in Photoshop and creating a layer mask so that you're not destroying any pixels in your image. So what does that mean? So to start, you're gonna need one high resolution image uh, that contains an object that you can isolate which will support the chosen client's advertising message. Um, I found one that I really like that's a lotus. So I thought that would be kind of a nice tranquil spa image. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as an example here. Um, so you, guidelines for submission for this, you'll see this is your final sh submission should be a 300 DPI layered 8 by 10 Photoshop file that's that dot psd when you save it showing the object isolated from the background using masking techniques so the masking techniques part is the most important part here this is where you're not destroying any pixels in the process of creating um an isolated image so i have this photo open so your image should be eight by ten so i'm just going to go ahead and look at the size of this one and it's 12 by eight. Um, what you can do, if you want to, you can do a file new and create an eight by 10 canvas. I don't mind the orientation can be portrait or landscape, but that's fine. And then just go ahead and either drag this photo onto it, or you can just do a file place. And I'm just gonna do it as place embedded. And that way it is right in, in your eight by 10 canvas. Now from here, you wanna make sure it fills the canvas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this out a bit. So it fills the canvas. Um, the other thing you can do with your original photo is just crop it to eight by 10. So using the crop tool, there are these presets up here, you'll notice ratio, original ratio, there's um, this four by five, which is an eight by 10 image, basically. So if you select that, you can actually change the orientation with these little arrows. And you can sort of adjust this the way you want. So two different options on how to make this an eight by 10, because I often get people asking how they should do that. So definitely think about how you want this to appear in your ad, you know, the size that you want it to be. Eight and eight by 10 is probably a pretty decent size. You don't want it to be too big within your canvas. Um, and you'll you have to think about, you know, file size and that sort of thing once you start placing things into your ad. So if I just click the move tool, it's going to, or the select tool, it's going to just automatically crop that and i'm just going to go ahead and close this one since i'm not using it now there are a lot of different selection tools in photoshop the lasso tools the polygonal lasso tool the magnetic and these are kind of old school you know you can click and hold you know if you really want to get detailed and take a lot of time this uh, magnetic lasso tool is kind of neat to play with but one of the really cool things about Photoshop 2022 is there is this object selection tool. So before I start this, just want to point out that if you're not seeing these tools, how they are in my Photoshop, I am actually in the photography workspace and you can sort of play around with these different workspaces. You'll notice how the tools change. Um, from workspace to workspace, you get some different options. I like to work in photography, obviously, when I'm working on images, because it just all the tools that I need are there. So this really awesome object selection tool, you'll notice when I'm hovering over this flower, it's, it's picking up that there's an object here that can be isolated. So to grab it, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a little square around it. 
and it'll take a second, but then it'll grab it. So it just grabs it and selects it. And then I'm just going to go into select and mask. And here we can start cleaning some things up. So you'll notice it grabbed this part of the reflection. I don't necessarily want that in there. Um, so these tools over here, the brush tool, the refine edge brush, quick select, the brush tool works really, really well for cleaning up areas like this. And you'll notice up here, you have this add to selection and subtract from selection. And you can also change the size of your brush. So if it's a larger selection, you want to just like tap it. You'll notice it, it added that to the selection. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. If I subtract from selection, it just takes that part away. So I'm going to actually make my brush a little bit smaller because I want to get a little bit more detailed in here. So smaller brush, obviously good for detail. So you can just kind of go in, work around your edges. I like to zoom in just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, I might actually want this to be moved in just a little bit. So I can just kind of click and drag down this. Get in a little bit closer. But I think all of this selection, I'm kind of liking it. I think it looks pretty good. Now, if you're selecting people, this refine hair button is really cool. Um, I would recommend, you know, kind of experimenting with that. Another thing you can do is do this select subject and it creates the selection from what's most prominent in the image. I'm just going to select that and see it's going to discard my current selection, which I'm just going to say, okay, and we'll see how it does. So you can see it just added some kind of weird things in. I think what I did before worked better. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm just doing a Apple Z or Control Z. So from here, there are some different options. Um, your view mode just allows you to see your actual selection on different types of backgrounds. So on black, on white. Um, I like to have this marching ants because you can really see how close the selection is to the actual image. Um, these tools here, you can sort of smooth things with the smooth tool. It kind of makes those lines a little, a little less um, jaggedy, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, feathering, you'll notice if I pull that in, it's literally going to feather that. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to leave it as is. You'll notice you'll get like a really soft edge with that. I don't recommend using that. You can experiment with it, see what it does, but you know, it's probably good for stuff like clouds or, you know, something like that. Contrast, again, it's just going to pull things in a little bit tighter and shift edge is going to literally shift the edge one way or the other. So you may or may not notice a big difference with that one. So from here, if I'm happy with how my selection looks, scrolling down, I'm going to click this decontaminate colors and then output to a new layer with layer mask. And I'm going to select OK. And there's my selection. I'm going to zoom out here. So from here, if you see things that you don't like about this and there are things that you want to adjust, you can click back into that layer mask. And this is what's great about using these. And, you know, if you want to clean up some edges, you know, I want to maybe add some more of this like darker portion here. I can do that and then just hit OK. It'll create another layer mask. And you'll see my background is still there. Actually, if I right click on my mask and disable it, you can see my background is still there. So that's what's important about this. It doesn't destroy any of the pixels that are within your picture and it makes it fully editable. So if there's things that you want to continue to refine in it, just click back into that layer mask and refine. So from here, 
you can start doing some adjustments. If you want to add some adjustment layers, you know, add some of those brand colors in, you know, if I want to pull some of that um, Amethyst Bay purple colors, I can do that here. And say I'm happy with that. I would probably, you know, play with that a little bit, but I'm just going to go ahead and save as. And one thing to note, make sure these background layers are turned off. You notice if you save it with, you know, that background on, obviously it's not going to be isolated when you go to use your PSD file. So make sure that background file is turned off. And I don't need this. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. So go ahead and do a file save as and save it as a Photoshop file. And that's all there is to it for assignment 2-1. If you have any questions, let me know.